I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. disappeared into the depths of the sea. I'm Matt once again. We're about to another review. This is another Patreon review. Thanks to Lucas Green. Thank you so much for joining me on my Patreon. I want to thank everyone who has done that. I really appreciate it. If anyone ever wants to help me on Patreon or join my Patreon, the link to that is down below. Or if you ever want to request a review via PayPal, topic, review, pretty much anything. It could be something I even reviewed already or new thing, whatever. Link to my PayPal is down below too. But the request for today for Lucas Green is Atlantis The Lost Empire, which is a film I had heard of but I'd never seen. And it's a film where I liked. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun little, not little, it's fun adventure movie. And it was cool to hear Michael J. Fox, who is the voice of the lead character. And his character is a nerdy guy who the film takes place around 1914. He's doing this lecture, but no one's there because he's really working in a boiler room in this museum. And his grandfather was a guy who was obsessed with Atlantis, but no one believed him. And so this millionaire who knew his grandfather says, hey kid, I got the money, I got the crew, here's a book, the book you need, help them find Atlantis, fulfill your grandfather's dream. So it's an adventure story done in an anime style that I thought was uh, very well done. Because I guess apparently Mike Mignola, probably butcher that last name, the comic book artist behind Hellboy had a big hand in this movie. He didn't direct or anything, but he had a big hand on the visual style of this movie. And maybe that's why when I'm watching the film, I'm like, this is a really good looking flick. I, I like the character designs and you know, some of the, the CG used at the time. It's a combination of 2D animation as well as the, the, the CG. And I thought it worked out fairly well. And I'm like, Mike Mignola, I did not know the guy who created Hellboy had a hand in this movie. I thought that was fairly interesting. And also, I thought that the voice cast did a good job. Michael J. Fox is Milo. The, other, the guy who's going to help lead the team, as in he's going to decipher. He's the linguist. James Garner, may he rest in peace. He was, he's the commander of this team of mercenaries on this expedition. Uh, other people, you have... Don Novello, 
who's this demolitions expert. I'm like, I recognize this fucking voice. I enjoy it. I'm like, who is this fucking voice? I'm like, oh, that's who it is. If you ever watched Saturday Night Live back in the day, he was Father Guido Sarducci. <laughs> Father Guido Sarducci, the, the guy who, vo who did that character, he also had like a teeny cameo in Casper, the, the 90s movie. He's like, oh, no problem, no problem. And he got his head turned around when he exited the Casper house. Uh, that's the voice of this guy. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, just type in Father Guido Sarducci at YouTube. You'll, you'll find it. But I thought that was kind of a fun bit that they got him. Uh, I liked him in it. Uh, Phil Morris as a medic. Claudia Christian, who I remember from Babylon 5 as a lieutenant who works with James Garner's character, uh, David Ogden Steers, which I remember his voice from Pocahontas and Hunchback of Notre Dame. He's, his voice is in for a little bit. Jim Varney, may you rest in peace. He has a voice here as the cook named Cookie, the chef, I should say. Uh, apparently he died in by lung cancer t in February 2000 before the production ended and the film was dedicated to his memory. He was set, The producer was sad in that Varney never saw the finished film but mentioned that he was shown clips of his character's performance during the sessions and said he loved it. So that sucks. He didn't even get to see the f finished project. Uh, rest in peace, Jim Varney. I'm a big Ernest P. Worrell fan. Not just because he was a pitchman for Mel Yellow, which is on YouTube, but I grew up with his movies. My favorite being Ernest Steered Stupid, but I love the Ernest movies. Most of them. Even the ones I don't like, I like Jim Varney. I miss the guy. And another guy I miss, Leonard Nimoy. Because, of course, they do get to Atlantis. That'd be a fun movie, right? We're on the jury for Atlantis, and then they never find Atlantis. That would be an interesting, f you know, fucking with people movie. If they did a movie like Atlantis Lost Empire, and they have all these posters, and then in the movie they never get to Atlantis, that would be the biggest fuck you. <laughs> I, you know, I would not be surprised one day someone does that. I I'd find it hilarious, but I'm sure people would be pissed off. But he voices the teen of Atlantis. And the father of this girl that ultimately, of course, she and Michael J. Fox's character fall in love with each other. But I want to look at what the Michael Mignola part. Uh, here it is. The film's visual style was strongly based upon that of Mike Mignola, the com comic book artist behind Hellboy. And he was one of four production designers hired by the Disney studio for the film. He provided style guides, preliminary character and background designs and story ideas. Huh. So I thought that was a, a nice idea. I like the, the look of Atlantis, the really nicely done visual design of it. Um, the movie went at a good pace. I'm a sucker for a good, at least decent, but at this point, good adventure movie. You know, going through the water, they deal with a thing called Leviathan. I'm like, Leviathan? But it's this robotic lobster-like creature that guards Atlantis. Because of the legend of Atlantis that they were a technologically advanced race, so of course they have a technologically advanced equipment to guard the entrance. And this is a bit more of a serious movie. There are people who die in this film. There, there's people of the crew that die during the journey on this film. Nothing graphic, but there are people who die. So it's definitely not a movie that's a song or dance movie. There's not a Disney film that... I mean, it's, a bit, it's fine for kids, but... I appreciate that it was a little bit 
darker is not the right word, a little bit more serious, a teeny bit, it's still the silly fun, but there are some stakes. I mean, the simple fact that some of the crew do die on the journey, not the, the famous people, you know, the, the characters, but pretty much the red shirts, if you watch Star Trek, it's the red shirts that die. But again, the, the fact that that is an actual thing, like I said, brings a bit of a uh, stakes to the story, which I appreciate. Uh, one problem with the film, I could say there's really not much to the characters. Uh, the characters are definitely, if I like them, it's because of the voice actors, like Jim Varney. I got your four food groups that he holds off three fingers. You know, beans, bacon, whiskey, and lard. So <laughs> that's Jim Varney's characters, the, the chef, the... Uh, the father Guido well I know he has a that's not his name in the movie but that's how I remember him from the as the demolition expert and Michael J. Fox characters marveling the structure that took all these years to do and fuck it he blows it up to make a bridge it's like hey I made a bridge only took me like 10 11 seconds tops you know it's just a thing <laughs> I love the the demeanor that guy talks uh I find it very humorous, very funny. I will admit I did not see it coming that James, that James Garner's character would be the bad guy. Maybe it shows how stupid I am, but I don't, I don't know why. I just didn't see it coming. I guess I should have because it's like, okay, well, what's the threat in the third ad? There's got to be some type of threat that the characters have to overcome. I guess I didn't think of it, but I should have. So I felt dumb for that, but. Surprisingly enough, at times there's a little bit of blood. Like Michael J. Fox's character gets punched by James Garner and... Michael J. Fox's character has a little bit of blood on his lip. I'm like, that's kind of rare too. And again, I appreciate that. And I don't think this film did tremendously well when it came out. It, I mean, I believe there's a direct-to-video sequel, which, I mean, I guess that's why I went direct-to-video. But... It says it cost 90 to 120 million and it only made 186 million. Now, is that worldwide or in the US? I'm guessing that's worldwide. So it costs from 90 to 120 million. James Newton Howard did the score. He did fine with the musical score. It only made 84 million in the US, 101 million foreign. 186 million worldwide. Yeah, that's considered a disappointment. Box Office Mojo says the budget was 120 million. So let's say 120 million, even if you want to lower that to 100 million, that's just the budget of the production. But then you got to take in marketing, how much the marketing factored in. And then when a movie comes out, the studio does not get 100% of what it makes. It's got to split the difference with the movie theater. Just movie theater gets a cut, studio gets a cut. So they don't get the 100%. So yeah, movie that cost, and then when marketing, it, it probably over two, probably at least 200 million with marketing, at least 200 million. And then 186 million worldwide. That's that's not good at all. That's why I'm surprised they even did a direct-to-video sequel, if that's the case. Maybe it sold well on VHS. And I disagree with the critics. I mean, this gets a 49% of Rotten Tomatoes. Provides a fast-paced spectacle. I agree, but stints on such things as tier development and a coherent plot. I thought it was a coherent plot. I understood what was going on. What was incoherent about the plot? 
The plot was simple. Team of mercenaries, millionaire, guy whose grandfather was obsessed with this. They get together, millionaire stays behind, the others, they go on this journey. They find Atlantis. There's this crystals, which is the power for the people, their life source. Bad guys want to take it. Michael J. Fox's place. If you do that, these people will die. James Garner doesn't give a fuck. Some of the mercenaries do give a fuck because they got a heart. And then there's a battle to get that back to save the people. What's It does have a coherent plot. So what the fuck are critics talking about? Character development. I can understand the character development, but that doesn't make it an awful movie. I don't think it's a god-awful film or anything. Some praise it for its visuals, action adventure elements, and its attempt to appeal an older audience. That's what I said. I agree. So it was mediocre in regards to the story and characters. The story was fine. It failed to deliver as a non-musical to Disney's traditional audience. Why does it have to be a musical? Every Not every Disney film has to be a fucking musical. Disney pushes into all talking, no singing, no dancing, and in the end, no fun animated territory. Todd McCarthy variety. Oh, I'm sorry, McCarthy, that you didn't have any fishes swim, you know, singing and swimming. And dancing. Go watch The Little Mermaid then. The big problem with Disney's latest animated feature is that it doesn't seem dear to kids at all. It's so adult that it's massively boring. Really? So, I, what, would you say the same thing of, I don't know, Star Wars or Raiders of the Lost Ark? As a kid, I enjoyed those movies perfectly fucking fine, as did adults. What the fuck? The picture hasn't really broke away from the tired and... Ironically, Disney had hoped to update its image with this mildly diverting adventure, yet the picture has not really broken away from the tired and from the tried and true format spoofed in the far superior Shrek. I'm sorry, I liked this more than Shrek. I'll say that and then some. So yeah. Yeah, my criticism, yeah, the characters could have been fleshed out more. Like the medic. The medic guy, voiced by Phil Morris. Uh, there's this one character I did not like. It's the mole character who's taught weird. And I don't know if he's trying to be Peter Lorre or whatever the hell he's trying to do. But he likes the dig. That's all. He likes the dig. He was just... You didn't need that character at all. I just found him irritating. Could have completely cut that character out. And yeah, there, there's not a tremendous amount to the characters. I'll give you that much. But... I mean... I. Compared to films like Tarzan or The Lion King or Aladdin, yeah, it would have been nice to see a, to have a little bit more. I don't want to say depth, but just a little bit more to the characters. Although I'm too dumb enough to realize like how that would be. Maybe certain moments are quiet. Certain moments of. Oh, I'm sorry, that'd be considered too boring for the some of these critics. That's not singing and dancing. Who gives a fuck? Not every goddamn kid's Disney film should be singing and dancing, you schmucks. But that's just me, I guess. I'll give you the, the character development. But it's not like Disney films have fucking David Mamet dialogue and character development that... Yeah, the, okay. The more I think about it, there are some Disney films that 
decent character development. Um, and the more I think about it in my head, yeah, okay, I could give you that. I could give you that for this movie. And I can agree with you on that. If I have a flaw with it, that's what I could give you. But that doesn't dilute the rest of the movie with you know, having Michael J. Fox and James Garner and Jim Varney and all these other guys in there, Leonard Nimoy, well done visual, breezy, fast paced, it never gets boring, good looking visuals for a film from 2001, especially the finale where you have this big action scene which is entertaining and you have the camera following these planes The well, technologically advanced machinery that the Atlanteans have while James Darn is trying to get this uh, weather, not weather balloon, but a hot air balloon and like the gunfire and the way the camera flows around and the way it looks in the mix of 2D animation and 3D backgrounds. I thought it was a nice blending of the two. And it made for a fairly exciting finale. I won't give too much away. That's the thing. I don't want to give everything away. But yeah, I, I enjoyed the film. I was entertained. It was an easy sit, easy watch. Michael J. Fox, big fan of his. Always saddened what happened to him with the, the Parkinson's. Cut his career tremendously short. And of course, that's not even get into personal wise, of course. Because Michael J. Fox always seemed like a nice guy. And I always loved him in Back to Future films, The Frighteners, The Hard Way. Uh, I haven't seen Team Wolf in decades, so. But Casualties of War is a good one. I, I reviewed Greedy uh, a month or two ago. I liked Greedy with Michael J. Fox and Kurt Douglas. Kurt Douglas made recipes, but I, that's another review I already did. But yeah, thank you once again to Lucas Green for the pledge on my Patreon for suggesting this film. It was fun to watch. I'd be curious to see if the Blu-ray or has any features, uh, worthwhile features, I should say, making of things of that nature. Uh, yeah, sad to see, sad to see that this film didn't do well. Maybe it's one of those scenes, sadly, because around this time you also had Titan A.E., which I love Titan A.E. I think that's trembly underrated, which was also another mix of. 2D animation and 3D like CG and that failed horribly that that killed the studio that released it Titan A.E. and this film didn't do well I like that combination of the two it means for a visually intriguing aesthetic the, the mixture of, of those combinations and but they didn't do well so of course why would they keep doing it so now they focus strictly on the 3D CGI not so much the, the 2D animation or a combination of the two, so it's too bad. I mean, I I do appreciate what this film is trying to do. Now on the visual note, having one of the guys, you know, Hellboy work on it, that was cool. I mentioned the voice cast, and then having to be a little bit more adult. I'm not going to use dark or gritty; that doesn't work in this. But having to be a little bit more adult, people. A lot of kids appreciate that. I did back in the day. I think a lot of the kids did too. Sorry, critics that did have singing and dancing, fucking mermen, Aquaman coming out doing the goddamn Gundam style. Jason Mamma Mia, Roman Reigns of the Sea coming up, doing the fucking Ro Mr. Roboto singing. Take on me, take on me, take a shit of a fish. I mean, what the hell's fucking song he'd sing? Sorry, critics. But anyway, sorry. Thanks for watching. Take care. Stay tuned for more reviews. Thanks once again to Lucas Green. And see you guys later. Bye-bye.